My guest today was a star defenseman in the NHL. He played 14 years for the Vancouver Canucks and the Anaheim Ducks. He was an incredible two-way defenseman and was a massive physical force on the back end. Off the ice, he's one of the best analysts in the game today. It's my absolute honor to welcome to Jake's Takes the one and only Kevin Bieksa. What's up, Kevin? How you doing? I agreed to do this because I know your intros are next level. That was an unreal intro. Can I? Can you write that in a resume for me? 100%. I'll send it right over. <laughs> Appreciate it, buddy. Man, you deserve all of it. And it just means a lot for me to have you on the show. Super excited to talk some hockey with you. So, And, of course, right. I, got, I got to give a huge shout-out to my guy, David Amber, for hooking this up. We had a great time on the show, and he told me he'll he'll put in a good word. So thank you, David. David Amber is the best, and he's the one that connect, connected us. So um, let's make him proud. Yeah, he's he's amazing. Anyway, so you told me you're in California. Is that where you live nowadays, like full-time? I am, but ironically enough, I'm actually in Vancouver right now. So uh, I'm in Canada at the moment. My dad lives here. I'm at his house hanging with him for a couple days, but I do live in California, same neighborhood that I lived when I played for the Ducks. Um, my kids got kind of wrapped up in school there and didn't want to leave when I retired. So I make the trip to Toronto every weekend for Hockey Night in Canada. Wow. Just wow. That's amazing. That dedication. Co- right couple there. air miles, eh? A couple air miles. Seriously. That's dedication. A lot of plain food too, Jake. A lot <laughs> of plain food. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, so Kevin, I we were talking about David Amber, and when I had him on my show, I asked him if if you and if you and David squared up, who, who would win in a fight? He said you'd beat him because you you're you're mm-hmm. very you're used to you're a professional fighter. He said you've gotten a lot of penalty minutes from fighting. How, what's the over under on how many seconds they're giving him in that fight? I think you knew before you asked that question what the answer was going to be. David is, uh, he's very good shape and he's a very strong looking guy, but uh, I think I have the experience over him there. And I don't think it would be that quick. I think he, uh, he doesn't give himself enough credit. It'd be a, it'd be a good tilt. I'm sure maybe if if it was for charity or for the right reason, we could maybe uh, orchestrate that. That'd be amazing. (laughs) Anyway, so hockey's officially back. And it's been a great start to the season. Let's start with Toronto. And, you know, it's easy to get caught up with Matthews' ridiculous start. Three goals in the first two games. The six goals in the first two games. Just remarkable. But overall, the team the, the team hasn't been so good. It's been, like, sloppy, especially in the defense and, um, and the goaltending. They've been giving up a lot of goals, bad D-zone coverage. How do you rate the Leafs' start to the season so far? Well, I mean, you kind of just did a, a great synopsis right right there of their season. And, and the power play is number one again, Jake, and that's where it was kind of around last year was top three for most of the season. So they're doing the same things they were doing last year. They're scoring goals. Their offense is uh, doing its job. But defensively, I think everybody's always had questions and certainly not the, the start defensively they wanted. I think Samsonov's looked really good, though. That's that's a bright spot for for them. But uh, they get Tampa Bay on Saturday coming up, so that'll be a, a pretty good test right away to see how they're going to play because I think beating Tampa Bay and you think about playing them in, in the playoffs, uh, if they end up getting them in around one or two, it, they got to be able to win those low-scoring games where they can play pretty tight defensively and just score like two or three goals when, when they need. So I'm kind of looking forward to see how they do in that one. 100%. That's a pretty big game. Anyway, I've, I've actually always been tough on Willie Nylander. Because I feel like when playoff time rolls around, you need to battle with your teammates. It's it's so hard to see him just not lay all of it out there. But so far this year, man's looked unreal. Skating's awesome. He's really strong on the puck this year. What are your thoughts on Willie? Well, you sound like David Amber right now, first of all, with, with his uh, you know constructive criticisms at times of Nylander. But he scored a goal against Minnesota, which made me think – Okay, maybe his game, and don't get me wrong, great player. He's a very good player for the Toronto Maple Leafs. But obviously, we, you know, in Toronto, there's high expectations for this team. And if they're going to get over the hump, it's going to probably be him along with a couple other guys that are going to get them there. So 
He scored a goal, though, against Minnesota where he dipped his shoulder and he took the puck to the net hard and kind of went around the goalie with the defenseman draped on him. And I, I kind of made a comment about it when I was uh, on Saturday night on the panel and said, I think he might feel a little bit bigger, a little bit heavier, a little bit stronger because of the additions they made with Ryan Reeves and Domi and McKay Blaster and Bertuzzi. Having these, you know, edgy guys, competitive guys on the team makes everybody play a little bit bigger, but a little bit stronger. And it seems like Nylander's kind of taken that to heart. And he's obviously a very skilled guy, great skating, great puck uh, uh, possession and stuff. But if he can start playing like a power forward like that, I think that's going to help them. And and certainly that goal was maybe a, a small sample size of what's to come for this season for him. Man, I hope so. Because I remember seeing a stat like of this past playoffs. And it was like people were comparing Matthews to Nylander's playoffs. And Nylander's numbers look like a little bit better. And then, then there was one stat there that just, like, took me over. And that was hits. Marner. Marner had, like, 30 more hits than Nylander in the playoffs. I was blown away. I was like, what is going on? So I hope he can just start playing bigger, like you said, and it can be a sample size of what's to come. I agree. But you have to remember, though, Jake, everybody has their their assets and, and what they bring to a team. So – I think like what you're saying and I'm saying, we're certainly not looking for Nylander to run around like Lucic and, and run defensemen through the boards. But I think like the plays, like I was just talking about protecting the puck, taking it to the net hard, it's only going to make him a, a more elite offensive player. So I think uh, like the whole team needs to kind of take that attitude on it. And so far it, it looks like they have, they're certainly with the puck and offensively. 100%. Anyway, so the Leafs now have a new top line adding some grit with Tyler Bertuzzi. And I came up with a name for this line. You ready for this? You take I the, got it. Let's go. Let's go. Take the first letter of each one of their names. You got A for Austin, T for Tyler, and M for Mitch. You got the ATM line because they're absolute <laughs> money. You like that? Pay them. Pay oh, them. Yeah. Right? Exactly. All, two are already get. actually all three are kind of getting paid. So that makes sense, that line. But it looks like they're going to really complement each other. I love Bertuzzi's edge with those two guys kind of getting in there and you might be too young to remember the Sedins and Burroughs, their dominance in 2011, 12, 13. It was almost the same way. It was two really skilled guys that wanted the puck, and then it was that little mucker that would go get it for him. And that's kind of what Bertuzzi's brought to that line. Yeah, I love Bertuzzi. He's really good. He's he's going to really compliment them. Anyway, yeah. I, want, I want to ask you about actually Bertuzzi's old team, the Bruins. They got a new captain this year in Brad Marchand. And I saw that he was he was already up to his same old things, you know, the tricks, trying to t- tick off Connor Verdard the other night, just getting up in his grill, being annoying. And his style of play is just obviously way different from their past captain, Patrice Bergeron, absolutely an amazing captain. But is, do you think Marchand was the right choice for the C? Do you like it when the captain's such a pest? Like, I feel like past and that deserve to be in that conversation, too. Yeah, probably he deserved to be, and I'm sure he was in the conversation. But, I mean, I mean, you think what makes Marshawn so good is that he has that edgy competitiveness, and he's been doing it for a long time. And I think he's one of those guys where you hate to play against him, but you love having him on your team. And uh, I'm sure the guys in the dressing room really respect him there. Uh, quick little story. I lined up against him in a face-off in Boston. It was maybe like his second – no, it was maybe like his third or fourth year in the league. And he was already starting to become a really good offensive player. And he was kind of up to his shenanigans in the game, kind of jabbing guys and chirping and everything. And I looked at him, I said, why do you do all that stuff? Like, you're a good enough player that you don't need to do all this stuff. And he looked at me, Jake, and he goes, Kev, I can't help it. <laughs> and I, Actually, I got a good, I swear to God, I got a good laugh out of it. I'm like, he can't help it. Like, he's just, he's that guy that's just so competitive and just wants to get in guys grill and chirp and play. And he's, He's a good player, but he can back it up. He he backs it up with his play. He doesn't back it up in, in a fighting sense, but he backs it up with his play. He holds on to the puck. He he's a, one of the best forwards and like top twenty forwards in the game probably right now. So he he can back it up. Yeah, hundred percent. He's he's really really good. Anyway, so I mentioned Nylander before, and obviously he's in a contract year this year. He's going to get paid. It's no secret the Leafs don't have much salary cap left. So how's this for a wild idea? But you go out there and trade Willie for like Steven Stamkos. Stammer wouldn't demand nearly as much money as Willie. He'd be coming home, still got game left. And like 
things just it, it just could be amazing like come back to Toronto and Tampa hasn't shown that they've been all in on signing him again so which team would say no to that trade to Tampa or Toronto that's interesting um I don't know so you're talking about an in-season trade obviously yeah uh but I don't know how they would make that work unless it was closer to the deadline because Toronto's already over the cap Stamkos has a higher cap hit than Nylander right now it's interesting, though, because you have to think all these Toronto kids that grow up there want to play for the Leafs at some day, like Tavares, right? He he wanted to come yeah. back to Toronto after a pretty good career in, in Long Island. Stammer's a Toronto guy. I'm sure he'd love to play for the Leafs. Um, yeah, I don't know. That, that, that's an interesting take right there. Yeah, I think, I think it would be an amazing, amazing trade. Are you the first person with this take? Or yeah. You, have you heard anybody? Yeah, okay. Well, hey. The, get the wheels going, and if it happens, uh, everybody heard it here first. This was your idea. Oh, yeah, it would be great. Anyway, so since I was just – I just came up with an idea like I'm a GM. Let's put you in the GM shoes, Kevin, okay? Okay. Yeah, I'm a little bit older than you. Let me try to be a GM now. You're starting a franchise. You get to pick one of these two duos to start your franchise with. Who are you taking? Jack and Quinn Hughes or the Kachuk brothers? Oh, that's a tough one. Um, I mean, I love the Kachuk brothers. I think you can see them in my background right here. You got Brady and you got Matthews uh, socks from Major League Socks. Oh, yeah. But I, I think uh, if you're starting a franchise, it's always nice to have one forward, one defenseman. So I think I'd probably go with Quinn Hughes and, and Jack Hughes. And Jack is, I've heard people talking about the possibility of him flirting with 150 points this year. They're thinking that he's he's going to have that big of a year. And uh he certainly looks more and more confident every year. And then the more you watch Quinn Hughes, I'm in Vancouver now and maybe a little bit biased to, to Quinn, but he's uh, one of the top three defensemen in, in the world right now, I think. He, he plays a ton of minutes. He can he can basically be your only puck-moving defenseman that you need because he plays so much and he's so good at it. So I'll go Quinn Brothers, or uh, Hughes Brothers, sorry. Oh, yeah, they're, they're, they're special. You know, the NHL, I think it was, just came out with a list, the top 100 list. I could be wrong. But I'm pretty sure Jack Hughes was number four on that list ahead of guys like Matthews and Dreisaitl. I think that's a big take, like over Matthews. Yeah, I don't know if he's that high, but he's certainly a guy that uh, people have a lot of respect for his his offensive game and his uh, his skill set with with the puck. Uh, four is a little bit high for me, but um, I think offensively he's, he's got obviously more upside than Brady and Matthew. Matthew and Brady have that grit though that everybody just loves. Like you just love watching those two guys play hockey. Like Brady's like the perfect captain for the Ottawa Senators, and uh, you know Matthews had a pretty good going with the the Florida Panthers as well. Yeah, Brady's had a great start to the season. Yeah, he looks good. Oh yeah. Anyway, so last question, Kevin. You you yep. were a stud defenseman. You led the Vancouver can you led the Vancouver Canucks in scoring twice their defense. So who do you say was your favorite D partner to play with in your NHL career? I only led the team twice for defensemen. I felt yeah. like I led like I thought I felt like I led every year. <laughs> only Maybe. twice, eh? Uh, no, no, you're you're right. You're right. It's funny because I was out for dinner with uh, Alex Adler, if you remember him. He just um played for LA last year, but it was my my good teammate in Vancouver for 10 years and uh uh, we were talking about points and he never was a guy that brought up points. And then I said something and he kind of corrected me and I'm like, Oh, this guy does know how many points everybody had all the time. So I, I would say Edler was one of, although we didn't have the best season together. Um, he was one of my favorite uh, defensemen to play with. Dan Hamuse was probably my all time favorite. We just complimented each other so well. And we were partners there. We went to the Stanley cup final uh, cam Fowler. I really enjoyed playing with in, um, in uh, Anaheim. Um, trying to like Willie Mitchell was a great partner. Matthias Olin was my first D partner in the NHL. I had a lot of great partners. If I had to pick one, though, I would say it was Dan Hammers. Kevin, thank you so much for taking your time to join me today on my show. Did you enjoy your time with me? I did. It was a lot of fun to talk to you. You're uh, you're a lot more fun to hang out with than David Amber. I'll give you that. Thank you, man. <laughs>